Madungkan ba kong tingog? Yes, sir. Alright, sige, let's start. Yes, sir. Klaro ang sa screen. Na, na may okay. unsa sa point. Na a. Uh, all right, sige. Let's begin. So rule 115 is all about rights of the accused. Uh oh, wow. all know that the criminal procedure sets uh, <laughs> which are available to both parties but the accused are emphasized because the accused is the one who is being detained and the one who is being detained is the one who has um, lesser chances in 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 the proceedings so that's why it is the job of the calf makers of the rules of court to give emphasis on the accused so as to protect him and his dignity while being detained or being incarcerated. So these are your some of the rights of the accused during trial. So it says here that in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall be entitled to the following rights. So what are these rights? So first you have the right to be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Second, to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation against him. Third, to be present and defend in person and by counsel at every stage of the proceedings, from arraignment to promulgation of judgment. Fourth, to testify as witness in his own behalf. Fifth, to be exempt from being compelled to be a witness against himself. Uh, letter F, to confront and cross-examine the witnesses against him at trial. Letter G, to have compulsory process issued to secure the attendance of his witnesses. H, to have speedy, impartial, and public trial. And lastly, to appeal in all cases. So we will discuss the very important provisions under the rights of the accused during trial. Now, most of these rights were called from Article 3, Section 14 of the 1987 Constitution. So Article 3, we all know that is the Bill of Rights. So under the Bill of Rights, it says there, in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall be presumed innocent until the contrary is proved and shall enjoy the right to be heard by himself and counsel to in be informed of the nature and cause of accusation against him, to have a speedy, impartial, and public trial, to meet the witnesses face to face, and to have compulsory processes to secure the attendance of witnesses and the production of evidence in his behalf. However, after arraignment, trial may proceed notwithstanding the absence of the accused, provided that he has been duly notified and his failure to appear is unjustifiable. So the rights from the criminal procedure, the basis niya is this one, the Article 3, Section 14 of the 1987 Constitution. So if you were if you are going to be asked what is the constitutional basis of the rights of the accused during trials. So you should cite Article 3, Section 14. Okay, so let's discuss one by one. One by one, or some of the salient features of the um, rights of the accused under Rule 115. So the first one is to be presumed innocent until the contrary is proved beyond reasonable doubt. So this concept is known as the presumption of innocence under um, the Bill of Rights. So based on Article 3, Section 2, again, this is your constitutional provision or basis. In all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall be presumed innocent until the contrary is proved. Now, um, this presumption of innocence, we all know, diba, may be countered with the quantum of evidence which is proof beyond reasonable doubt. So you may only convict an accused if your evidence is um, ultimately can provide the quantum of evidence required from criminal actions, which is proof beyond reasonable doubt. So in Mupas versus people, can you read proof beyond reasonable doubt was um, defined. So it is that doubt that engendered by an investigation of the whole proof and an inability after such investigation 
to let the mind rest each upon the certainty of guilt. So, sa'yo pasabot, Ani, sure good ka na siya ginanagbuhat atong uh, criminal action na to. And ang imo muna-huna ka, nang, hindi siya nag-doubt ba? Hindi siya nag- kanang nag-huna-huna na na innocent na buwan siya o guilty good. So, when you say proof be unreasonable, why ka duda-duda? Siya good ang nihimo sa krimen. Huwag na pasabot sa proof beyond reasonable doubt. Now, again, in order to convict the accused, the burden lies on the prosecution. Meaning, kung sino yung, ano, kung sino yung taga-usig, or let's say the prosecutor, it is his job to prove that uh, the accused is the one who committed the crime. So the prosecution must rest on the strength of its own evidence. Meaning, ang prosecution dapat magproduce of evidence strong enough to convict the criminal or the accused in this case. And he should not rely on the weakness of the defense. Meaning, kusog, so let's say, hinay ang, hinay ang evidence sa prosecution. Pero katong pag present sa evidence sa, sa defense, uh, hinay po ng ilahang depensa. So dapat hindi na mag-realize sa depensa, sa, sa weakness ilang depensa. Dapat sa strength sa prosecution, meaning sa to own uh, evidence, hindi kayo mag-realize ka sa weakness sa pikas. Now, there is what we call the equipose rule. So kung sa'yo tawag anong equipose rule? Where the evidence in a criminal case is evenly balanced, the constitutional presumption of innocence tilts the scales in favor of the accused. As a matter of fact, I have used Equipo's rule in solving resolutions. Why? For example, ang, ang, ang complainant may provide of evidence na, let's say, na this individual committed crime against me, but the a respondent also um, provided exculpatory evidence na he has not done this. As a matter of fact, he was away from the time that he did this, or let's say that you're not, niya, ilang ebidensya kay patas tanan. So maggamit ng equipos rule. So pasabot ani, kung balance ang ebidensya on both sides, dapat gihapon, mag-unsa mag, manaig gihapon ang constitutional presumption of innocence. So that's what you call the equipos rule. Any questions so far? Wala? Hello, sir. Yeah, All right, next is to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation against him. If you remember under Rule 110 on information, di ba? Atong pagbasa sa information sa isa ka-akusado. Na. Example, actually, na, example ganit ninyo to na you convert the information into a language known to the accused, whether Bisaya or Kinamayo. Di ba, Gi? Butang na ito dito kung ang uh, information, how, how we should read the information towards the accused kaya para ma, ma siya, ma apprise siya of the nature of the uh, offense and cause of accusation against him. So, kaning information, it is necessary for the complaint or information to contain the matters required by the statute or rules. So, kaning um, letter B, Basically, um, this is reading the the information to the accused. Kung unsa gud ang iyahang sala. To be present and defend in person and by counsel at every stage of the proceedings from arraignment to promulgation of judgment. So basically, this is what you call the right to counsel. And should you deny an accused from having his own counsel. It is as if you are denying due process for him. Okay, naagi na sa balaod na an accused should always be assisted by a member of a bar of the bar, or else you would be denying him of due process. As a matter of fact, under Republic Act 7438, um, any person arrested, detained, or under custodial investigation shall at all times be assisted by counsel. So, 
if you arrest an individual, if you detain a person, or if you do custodial investigation, he should always be at all times be assisted by counsel. When you say counsel, a member of the bar, meaning a lawyer. Now, what do you mean by custodial investigation? It is the stage where the police investigation is no longer a general inquiry into an unsolved crime, but has begun to focus on a particular suspect taken into custody by the police or carry out a process of investigation that lends itself to elicit incriminating statements. So, what is custodial investigation? When you invite individuals for investigation, the manner of questioning is, let's say, si Miss Manok na bagyod ba ang nipatay kang Mr. Pawaon sa Puringana? Siya gin ba ang nipatay? Nakita ang bagyod mo. Pag ingaan na ka ng lining of questioning, pasabot, you're already focusing on a certain individual. And if you are that accused who's being questioned by the police in that manner, then the right to a lawyer already attaches. So that time na di-investigahan na ka sa police, kung ang manner sa questioning sa police kay ikaw bagyo na nipatay ani mga ingana you should be assisted by counsel by that time because the moment the police in uh, starts to investigate via custodial investigation the right to counsel already attaches nakuha ayo nakuha ni ko hasen All right. So, my purpose is the right to counsel during um, when you are detained or when you are um, uh, under custodial investigation. The purpose of this is to curb the uncivilized practice of extracting a confession. Okay. It's, I mean, now we certain history in policemen na mag extract a confession under duress ang unsa ba ang ang imuhang respondent or imuhang akusado so in order to prevent that you should be assisted by counsel at all times so it says here any extrajudicial extrajudicial confession made by a person arrested detained or under custodial investigation should be in writing meaning dapat nakasulat and signed by such person in the presence of his counsel so for example may extrajudicial confession ka, i-amin mo na ikaw yun, tinood ang nidunggab ka Mr. Pawaon. So dapat, ibutang ni mo na siya in writing, tapos, kaning in writing na ni, was done na naaang iyahang abogado para ma-admit ma siya as extrajudicial confession. So what if kung walay abogado, ang himuon mo is, again, in writing gapon siya, Signed by the person who committed the crime, let's say, uh, si Ms. Manong ang nakapatay kang Mr. Pawaon. So, I, uh, Katim Kim Manong, um, do confess that I killed Patrick Pawaon by using a bolo and struck him in through his neck. Ano ba? So, kani siya na confession dapat present ang imuhang uh, immediate relatives which are your parents elder brothers sisters it could also be it could also be your spouse the municipal mayor the municipal judge the district school supervisor priest or minister of the gospel as chosen by the accused so what will happen if this is not in writing and you were not assisted by counsel nor of your um, close relatives so that extrajudicial confession will be inadmissible as evidence. That is by virtue of Republic Act 7438. So if you will become future policemen and gusto mag-confess ang akusado to the crime, you should follow this because this, this is the proper way of extracting an extrajudicial confession. It should be done in writing and he should be assisted by counsel and in the absence of his counsel, dapat na ang iyahang immediate relatives and some personalities such as your mayor, judge, school supervisor, and your priest or minister.
Ka araw ni ha. Okay, so sa manis sa Republic Act 7438, so it is an act defining certain rights of person arrested, detained, or under custodial investigation as well as the duties of the arresting, detaining, investigating officers and providing penalties for violations thereof. Your 7438 also provides um, guidelines to police officers and the guidelines of which include reciting the Miranda rights to the accused when he is under detention or when you are arrest him or when he is um, detained. So please do not forget Republic Act 7438 and the manner of extracting extrajudicial confession. Okay. To have speedy, impartial, and public trial. So the accused should have the right to a speedy trial. This is to free him from vexatious, capricious, and oppressive delays, his purpose being to assure that the innocent person may be free from the anxiety and expense of court litigation or having determined the shortest possible time compatible with the presentation and consideration of whatsoever legitimate defense he may interpose. So meaning, this is to free the accused from unduly delays ba? Labi na ka ng, for example, hindi magpakita ang hindi magpakita ang complainant. Kung ikaw ng complainant na na hindi siya ka-attend doon kaya na siya sakit. Maka next week na po, during hearing, hindi ka-attend kay niya to nag-Manila o sa ba? Kana, yan, delaying the process ba? So, if that happens, the defense counsel may move for the right of the accused to have speedy trial. Meaning, if the complainant fails to appear in court for three consecutive times, then the right to a speedy trial must already attach. Meaning, maka avail na ang akusado anak because it appears na this is just oppressive on the part of the accused. Kaya hindi mo nagpapakita ang ang complainant. And kung wala ni right to speedy trial, then forever nila tayo maghulat sa 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 complainant. Ano eh, murag hindi po, ayaw po rin nga na kay it will unjustly uh, violate the right of the accused to speedy trial. Any questions so far? May pangot, Ana? Para, sir. All right, sige. To be exempt from being compelled to be a witness against himself. So, ang say tawag, Ani, it is the right against self-incrimination. Self-incrimination, you cannot compel yourself to be a witness against yourself. Hindi po ka pwede na, for example, ikaw ang nipatay. Mangutan ang tao si Muha. Tinood ba dyan, ikaw ang nipatay, Ani? You have the right to say no because you have the right to be exempt from being compelled to be a witness against yourself. Meaning you cannot incriminate yourself to the crime. So pwede ka mag-lie. Muna, pasabot anak ba? So no person shall be compelled to be a witness against himself. So this covers testimonial testimonial actions. Meaning you cannot say anything you say Anything you do cannot be used against you. Pero there are these certain cases that I would like to point out. So for example, so may mga lalaki na din. Let's say, kaling si Mr. Taba, girape niya si babae din. Si Miss Balilahon. O si Miss Balilahon. For example, girape niya si Miss Balilahon. Um, ang nakita po, Miss Balilahon contracted gonorrhea. Gonorrhea is tulo tungkol sa act of rape. So, ang nakita po is, uh, gusto nila tanawon, let's say, 
si Miss Balilahon is blind. Ha, blind siya. So, wala siya kabalo sa identity sa akusado. So, let's say, uh, gi-test si ang mga tao na surrounding uh, Miss Balilahon. Si, isa itong mga lalaki na naigunuriya. So, can you invoke your right to self-incrimination sa testing of gonorrhea? Let's say, for example, si Mr. Taba na ang gitawag, can he say, I have the right against self-incrimination I will, or I will invoke my right against self-incrimination kay itesting man ninyo ako ang sperm or ako ang dugo for gonorrhea and if mag-positive, um, it will incriminate me sa crime kay that would point me as the as the accused who raped Miss Balilahon. Can you do that? Can you can you raise the right against self-incrimination if test pa test ang imuhang blood or imuhang sperm for gonorrhea? Do you think? Oh, Mr. Taba, you answer. Mr. Taba. No, sir. Ah. Can you invoke your right against self-incrimination? Kukuhaan ka dugo or sperm to prove na ikaw gito nakahatag o gonorrhea kay Miss Balilahon? Yes, sir. Yes? Hello, di ka klaro. <laughs> Mr. Tava, say mo ito bag. Grabe naman kung magtubag mi. Yes sir. Tumugm lagi kanina wala. Hello. Oh, uh, any volunteer? Volunteer? Anyone? Ako, sir. No, sir, because it is not witnessing against yourself, sir. It is just a uh, testing, sir. Ah, okay. Thank you, Mr. Sir. Good day, sir. What's that? No, sir. I didn't want to make a self-incrimination, sir. I didn't want to make a test, sir. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Solante. Yes, Mr. Solante is correct. Um, gigu ang gibuhat ka, Mr. Tava, is just a mechanical act. There was no form of testimonial or testimony that came out from his being. So if you can remember, the right against self-recrimination only covers testimonials, meaning words that come out from your mouth. So pag mechanical gani, dili na siya covered. So for example, size of the foot. Let's say, nangawat. Thank you, Mr. Solante. Thank, for example, kaning size of the foot. Gi, let's say, nangawat, nagrab ka sa isa ka uh, mall. Tapos, nayabo ang paint. Imuhang, imuhang foot kay uh, natamakan mo tong paint. So, klaro kayo imuhang, imuhang footprints along the way. Karon, Uh, ang gidudahan kay ang mga ang neighboring houses. So, gipatawag ang tanang neighboring houses and gipamatch sa foot sa nakamutang sa floor. So, for example, si 
Mr. Pawao na nangawat ato. Tapos ipa-try na i-compare ang size sa foot sa paint o sa iyahang foot. Can he um, invoke the right against self-incrimination? No, sir. No, sir. Yes, no, Giappon, because this is just a mere mechanical act. This goes along also with your paternity test. So, for example, rape. Wala ka kabalo, kinsa ni rape sa muha. Pat na kay idea kung kinsa. So, kipa paternity test ni mo ang isa kalalaki. And ang gimo sa lalaki, let's say, say, let's say si A yun ang, ang lalaki na ni nakabunti sa muha. Si letter A cannot invoke the right against self-incrimination because um, the act of securing the blood from you is just a mechanical act and it is not, it's not covered under testimony. So mauna, he cannot invoke the right against self-incrimination kung magpapaternity test siya. However, there are exceptions. Ang exceptions ani kay forced reenactments and handwritings. So for example, nagwrite si Miss let's say si Mr. Taba nagwrite og uh, patyon tikang buanga ka kay Mr. Solante nya daga na kay na, na receive si Mr. Solante na na letters coming from Mr. Taba na patyon tika and eventually si Mr. Taba na patay gyud niya si Mr. Solante so ang gibuhat sa police is gi try nila identify kung kung kinsang handwriting ni so gi si Mr. Taba Ipadoy na sa police station. Oh, sige daw. Can you perform your handwriting? So at this stage, Mr. Taba may invoke the right against self-incrimination. Why? Because the act of using your handwriting or doing your handwriting is not a mechanical act but requires your intellect and communication in order to perform it. So muna, ang handwriting, pag ipahandwriting mo sa unsa sa inyong police, pwede na mo mag-invoke o right against self-incrimination. That also in includes forced reenactments, meaning ipwersa ka na, sige daw, i-reenact daw itong yun sa nimo pagpatay sa iya ha. So this is not a mere mechanical act. Eh. Kailangan mo nang isipon, kung sige itong ibuhat pag sa pagpatay kay Mr. Solante, di ba? So, this is um or your right to right your right to self incrimination already attaches pag ipa forced reenactment ka or ipa forced ang handwriting nakuha yes sir all right so that also goes along with your drug test diba so ang drug test dili na siya self incriminating sa muha because mechanical act lang man na kuha lang man ang muhang urine to perform whether or not you are a user or dili. Now, mag-yes na ninyo nga nung ginagamit ang drug tests in order to secure kung ang individual is a possessor or not. Okay, dili man siya self-incriminating. Now, since this involves um, being a witness to himself, there are also several immunities from being uh, free from, from using your testimony against you. This was what you call transactional immunity and use and derivative use immunity. Under transactional immunity, also known as the blanket or total immunity, the person who testifies is completely protected from future prosecution for crimes related to his or her testimony. So for example, si Mr. Bonus performed several crimes. Let's say he performed murder, he performed homicide, and he was called to testify, but he was given transactional immunity. So let's say, ang nakalarge lang na complaint against sa kiyaha kay, let's say, Homicide pa lang, wala pa na-appeal to other murder. So if he is given transactional immunity, he will be completely immune to um, prosecution of crimes related to what we, he will be testifying. What else? This use and derivative use immunity. So it prevents the prosecution 
from using the witness's own testimony or any evidence derived from the testimony against the witness. So, ano siya, the witness, kung sa may testify niya, which is incriminating against him, but he was granted the use and derivative use immunity, cannot be used against him. But, for future prosecutions, it may be used against him if he indeed committed another crime. So, ang difference between sa duha is, for transactional immunity, you are completely immune, whether at this stage of the proceeding and for future crimes that are going to be um, filed against you. Whereas, ang use and derivative use immunity, ang um, imuhang testimony will only be, will only cover your immunity on that matter only and on that case only. And it will not cover future crimes to be filed against you. Nakuha. Yes, sir. All right. Next is to confront and cross-examine the witnesses against him. So it is essential to test his or her accuracy to expose falsehoods and cover the truth. So it is the right of the accused to cross-examine his witnesses. Gano man, para may bala niya ko, tama ba iyang ginaigon? This is to also to observe na is he lying or is he trying to cover something? Or is he trying to impute the accused? The accused? So, ang nagabuhat sa cross-examination is the lawyer. Although the right is given to the accused, but it will be the lawyer who will be giving you such right by cross-examining the witnesses that are testifying against you. To have compulsory processes issued to secure the attendance of witnesses and production of other evidence in his behalf. So the, it is the right of the accused to secure that the, the attendance of his witnesses. Kung naa siya witness na dili gusto mo attend or dili gusto mo, uh, mo present before the honorable court, then the court may issue a warrant of arrest against that certain witness. Ang ka powerful ang right sa accused. Available po din siya sa complainant. So Mauna, if na ako yung mga witnesses na kanang pabuyag gani kayo, kanang di magpakita yun, kana, kana akong gina, gina hangin sa court na mag-issue o warrant of arrest against sila. Mauna, kung ito ang gina sa mga polis sila na pinapalang di, di, di magpatestify o niya nagbuhat-buhat ang affidavit, niya nagkarang di kapoy-kapoy lang may, kana, maka, kana makapuhot yun na. So, also, you move for the issue once of a subpoena and testificandum or do testicum. You already know the difference between the two. So, pa issue kag subpoena, whether to call your witness or to call the witness along with his or her documents involved for the um, crime charge. To appeal in all cases allowed in the manner prescribed by law. So it is the accused who has the right to appeal in all criminal cases. However, be careful lang. Okay, if the accused chooses to appeal his case to a higher court, then this will be the effect. Appeal in the criminal case opens the entire case for review and the appellate court may correct even unassigned errors. Example for this, you were charged of acts of lasciviousness in the municipal trial court. So acts of lasciviousness, kind of, um, touching of the groin, touching of the vagina, mashing of the breasts, or touching someone's penis, or mga nga na, acts of lasciviousness na siya. However, wala, ang kusado, wag yun siya nisugod, yun ano siya na, let's say, ha, kanang gahi yun siya, kanang liar yun siya, gusto niya i-appeal lang. Nasa, ito siya talaga yun ko. So pag about sa higher court, di di ay acts of lasciviousness. Pag-review sa court, di ba, ang effect sa appeal is it opens the case for review entirely. Pag-tanaw sa court, sus, hindi lang di ay ni acts of lasciviousness. Kung sa di ay ni, rape di ay ni, let's say, let's say, ni-rape di ay niya tong, sa tong girl. So, that is the danger when you appeal kung akusado ka. Okay. Open siya for entire review. Meaning, 
um, tanan ng puting kahon, tama ba? Something yan na. Kaya para lang mahibalan po sa yun ang tinuod na crime commission. Sige. Moving on, Rule 116. So that is your uh, rights of the accused uh, under Rule 115. So please don't forget these rights as this will guide you on how you should act yourselves as policemen, especially when they are detained or under incarceration or under custodial investigation. So along with your Rule 115 is your Republic Act 7438. Ay na kayo mag go hand in hand din na sila. So let's move on to Rule 116, which is Arraignment and Plea. So Section 1, the accused must be arraigned before the court where the complaint or information was filed or assigned for trial. The arraignment shall be made in open court by the judge or clerk by furnishing the accused with a copy of the complaint or information, reading the same in the language or dialect known to him, and asking him whether he pleads guilty or not guilty. The prosecution may call at the trial witnesses other than those named in the complaint or information. So basically, this is the reading of the information before the accused. So katong, if you remember in Rule 110, diba, gibasa na ko tong uh, crime information and detail gi, gi, sa pagkainan ako to gi convert to Bisaya eh, para makasabot yun ang akusado. More ni pasabot aning section A, uh, section 1, letter A. Then, the accused must be present at the arraignment and must personally enter his plea. Both arraignment and plea shall be made of record but failure to do so shall not affect the validity of the proceedings. Meaning, the accused should be present during his arraignment. And he should personally enter his plea of guilty or not guilty. Section C. When the accused refuses to plead or makes a conditional plea, a plea of not guilty shall be entered for him. So for example, ibasahan si Mr. Laurente. Ikaw, Mr. Laurente, atong Augusto 90. Those mail by those mail by Uno sa ilalom sa Baganga Davao Oriental sa ilalom ani hilangdo hilangdo husgado ikaw ta tinuyan gipatay nimo si ang isa ka ang usa ka uh, tao nga naggalang uh, Bernardo Balante gamit ang bolo and then Mr. Laurente starts to cry and then naghagulgol siya nya yeah. are you guilty or mo sa mga tanan ko um sad an baka or dili so, si Mr. Laurente kay di samot og hilak naghagulgol so wala siya answer. So if wala siya answer ang i-enter nimo ana is not guilty. Wala na pasabot ana. When the accused pleads guilty but presents exculpatory evidence, his plea shall be deemed withdrawn and the plea of not guilty shall be entered for him. So with this let's say si Mr. Solante um, was charged of um, robbery. So, after reading the information of robbery against him, he, he said, let's say, he's, he, he, he will say before the court, Dili mo, ah, uh, oo, ako nang gibuhat, pero kanang butangan na, ako ang mana, igo lang mana, gikuha sa buwang balay. So, let's say, nag-present like, exculpatory evidence, meaning ownership over the said item, then, ayaw ibutang dito, o guilty. Ang ibutang niyo is plea of not guilty. Although he said na o oh, gibuhat na ko na. Okay. Present man siya exculpatory evidence. When the accused is under preventive detention, his case shall be raffled and its records are submitted to the judge to whom the case is raffled within three days from the filing of the information or complaint. The accused shall be arraigned within 10 days from the date of the raffle. The pre-trial conference of his case shall be held within 10 days after arraignment. This only applies to the accused when he is under preventive detention. So, um, hatagan lang ang court to uh, to choose a court na kuasa ma-assign ang ihang kaso. Okay, dito na siya i-arraign. Okay, mag-focus ano. Letter F, 
the private defendant party shall be required to appear at the arraignment for purposes of plea bargaining, determination of civil liability, and other matters requiring his presence. In case of failure of the defendant party to appear despite due notice, the court may allow the accused to enter a plea of guilty to a lesser offense, which is necessarily included in the offense charge with conformity of the trial prosecutor alone. So, during arraignment and pre-trial, actually, kaya siya naitabo, naga, naitabo, di ba, naman tayo ginaingon na crimes which are necessarily included, lesser crimes which are necessarily included. For example, you have their murder, homicide, um, serious physical injuries. These three, uh, pwede mong kunin siya ma under, um, under mong kunin siya sa isa ka title. So, Let's say you committed uh, homicide. Let's say you committed um, um, frustrated homicide. So when you say frustrated homicide, there is no killing because um, timely ang medical assistance. So pwede ka mag bargain to serious physical injuries because he did not die. Mauna ang um, nature sa plea bargaining mo mo confess ka or mo plead guilty ka to the lesser offense of that crime. So, unsa pa? Let's say rape. Pwede ka mag uh, plea, bargain, plea bargain sa rape from rape to acts of lasciviousness. And then from, if you were charged of acts of lasciviousness, pwede ka mag plea bargaining to unjust vexation. Meaning, kanang, grabe lang yun ang pagpulit sa imuha. Letter G, unless a shorter period is provided with special law or Supreme Court, the arraignment shall be held within 30 days. Okay, ito lang siya. Kanang. When should the court calendar your arraignment if you are the accused in this case? So you have to remember that in arraignment, this is the stage where in the mode and manner required by the rules, an accused for the first time is granted the opportunity to know the precise charge that, con that confronts him. Why? Because it is in the information nakabutang kung how he allegedly performed the crime. And you should include in your information all the necessary information that goes along with it. So review your rule 110. Kung sa dapat ang nahasunod sa mga information such as the place, the mitigating circumstance or aggravating circumstance, the date and time, the uh, what else? The name of the accused, name of the offended party, and that. So it is the formal mode and manner of implementing the constitutional right of the accused to be informed of the nature and cause of accusation against him. Again, you have to do, wait, you know, you have to, arraignment should be done because it is part of due process. So yun nga, this is informing him of the nature and accusation of the crime. So kung ikaw akusado, what will you do before arraignment and plea? So, kani oh, very important ni siya. Challenge the validity of the arrest and legality of the warrant and question the absence of a preliminary investigation. Why? Because once you are arraigned, meaning na-arraign na ka, basa na imuhang uh, information tapos ni nagatag na ka sa imuhang uh, Sagot na, which is guilty or not guilty, once you've done this and you have not challenged the validity of the, the way or manner you were arrested, then it is as if you waive the name of right to question the arrest or legality of the warrant. So muna, before arraignment, you have to inform the court that I was illegally arrested or the warrant that was issued against me is not in the proper form or it is not valid, it is void. Eh para katagal pa mong chance sa korte to um, dismiss the case. What else? Move for the quashal of the information. When you say quashal, is suppress. So, di sa ipadayo ng arraignment kay na ay certain facts that you need to check into. Like for example, motion to quash on the ground that the court does not have jurisdiction over the crime charge. So, pasabot, let's say, i-arraign mo for the crime of 
uh, let's say, slight physical injuries. Pero dito mo sa RTC, gi, 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 gi arraign. So, wala may jurisdiction ng RTC. Kaya di ba, ang slight physical injuries dapat man sa MTC. So, you move for the quashal of the information on the ground that the court does not have jurisdiction over the crime charge. And lastly, suspend the arraignment. So you can suspend the arraignment on the following grounds. Like for example, if the accused is insane at the time of the arraignment. So if the, if, if the accused is insane, how will he plead guilty or not guilty? Diba? You have to have an understanding of the information in order for you to say whether you are guilty or not guilty. No one is buang siya. So of course, it is a ground na suspend the arraignment. Isa na ito yung palayang arraignment kay na buang pa ang atuang akusado. So, pero what if nasa sa iyong lucid interval? If you remember ha, sa atuang criminal one, nasa sa lucid interval, meaning he is back in his senses, then you may um, secure him for his arraignment. Unsa pa? You may suspend the arraignment on the ground of prejudicial question. Di ba? Na-encounter na, na, na yung prejudicial question, meaning ang criminal case is suspend sa siya kay na civil action that will determine the effect or the conclusion of the criminal action. And lastly, if pending pa ang imuhang motion for consideration or petition for review between the Secretary of State. So, mo ano mga options ako sa doon before siya i-arrange? Any questions so far? Non, sir. <laughs> sure. Sure ha, bantay mo ito pag ako yung mga exam, ano yun niya? Hindi mo katubag. <laughs> Alright. Plea of guilty to a lesser offense. So, at arraignment, the accused with the consent of the offended party and the prosecutor may be allowed by the trial court to plead guilty to a lesser offense which is necessarily included in the offense charge. After arraignment, but before trial, the accused may still be allowed to plead guilty to send lesser offense after withdrawing his plea of not guilty. So no amendment of the complaint or information is necessary. So, very crucial ang consent of offended party and the prosecutor. Like, kung dili sila masugot na akusado mo plead to a lesser offense, digil ka pugos ang defense na mo plead to a lesser offense. That is the power of the prosecutor actually. So for example, wala ang offended party, so a prosecutor na ah, may ngon sila, mo plead na lang me from acts of lasciviousness to um, unjust taxation. Na may, when you, ako as prosecutor, I already know the history of this case. Let's say, let's cite the case of the Kui Kui in Katiil, uh, Davo Oriental. This case, okay, sige, Malayon siya, sige, acts of lasciviousness sa iyang cousins ba. So, tungkol sa iyang history, wala ko ni sugot sa iyang plea to a lesser offense because padayon na lang yun eh. Yeah, Wapagin siya na dakop ever since na tungkol sa na siya ay kaila sa police force. So, moto, yana ko na, no, I will not allow the accused to plead to a lesser offense because given the history of the accused, he has been actively and non-stop in trying committing the said crime. Tumoto, yan na ang defense na na kung pwede ba daw i-challenge ang akwang, akwang decision. The court said that no because the plea to a lesser offense lies with the consent of the, offend, of the offended party or with the prosecutor. So, maunat siya. So when you plead to a lesser, so may mga lain na pwede ka mag-plead to a lesser offense. So for example, nagsumbaganay mo, kunya, nasobra niyong sumbag, nag-result siya to serious physical injuries. You may plead to a lesser offense, which is like physical injuries or less serious physical injuries. Or from murder to homicide ka na, pwede mo mag-plead na. And then from rape to, act, to acts of lasciviousness. You just have to remember that kung mag-plea mo to a lesser offense, 
the crime should be necessarily included in the offense charge. Taro ta ha? Nay pangutana. Nay pangutana? Wala, sir. Wala. Okay. Mr. Opla. Can, if you were charged with robbery, can you plead to a lesser offense of estafa? Mr. Opla, if you were charged with robbery, can you plead to a lesser offense of estafa? No, sir. Why? Okay, dili man parehas yang Okay, because the cri the crime of estafa is not necessarily include in the offense charged of robbery. So if you are charged with robbery, we only plead to a lesser offense of theft or simple theft. Claro, ha? Yes, sir. How about arson to malicious mischief? Hilo mo lagi mo. It will be your assignment. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Plea of guilty to a capital offense, acceptance of evidence. So when the accused pleads guilty to a capital offense, let's say uh, murder, rape, um, what are other heinous crimes? Um, Anti-terror act, the court shall conduct a searching inquiry into the voluntariness and full comprehension of the consequences of his plea and require the prosecution to prove his guilt and the precise degree of culpability. The accused may present evidence in his behalf. So if you were charged with a capital offense, let's say rape, ingong ka guilty ka to the crime of rape, ang ginahimo sa judge is mamutala gin siya sa, sa akusado. Are you aware of the consequences if you plead guilty to this offense? So mo na maghimo siyang searching inquiry whether or not tama na ba sa tamang panghuna-huna o voluntary ba ang iyahang pag-ingon o guilty sa capital offense. As a matter of fact, mag-ingon bagay ng judge o oh, fiscal, you present evidence which will indicate that he is really uh, liable for the capital offense charge or his precise degree of culpability. Again, the purpose ani is to protect the accused. Plea of guilty to a non-capital offense, exception of evidence, discretionary. So when the accused pleads guilty to a non-capital offense, the court may receive evidence from the parties to determine where the penalty to be imposed. So if he, let's say, non-capital offense, let's say mga estafa lang, which is around, let's say, 40,000 pesos, or let's say, um, direct assault lang, ingana. So the court will only allow the parties to, ano, to present their evidence to determine the penalty of the accused. Section 5, withdrawal of improvident plea of guilty. So at any time before the judgment of conviction becomes final, the court may permit an improvident plea of guilty to be withdrawn and be substituted by a plea of not guilty. So let's say nag, earlier on, nag, nag ingon siya, you are guilty, but this is a capital offense. So before mag judgment, nag change of mind siya, he wants to say a plea of not guilty. So allowed na siya. So as long as before ka mag render of judgment and such judgment of conviction becomes final. Here is also another 
duty of the court to inform the accused of his right to counsel before arraignment. The court shall inform the accused of his right to counsel and ask him if he desires to have one. Unless the accused is allowed to defend himself in person or has employed a counsel of his choice, the court must assign a counsel the official to defend him. So basically, Section 6, allow uh, the court inquires from the accused whether or not he has a lawyer. So mamatara na ang korte. Mama kay abogado. So usually ang mga indigent individuals, wala na sila abogado because they cannot um they cannot uh they do not have the means uh, actually to pay for a private lawyer so mauna mautana ng court do you need this to secure the services of of a lawyer when like, oh, oh is it okay if the court will appoint the public attorney's office to stand before you as lawyer uh for the time being or for the time of arraignment so may sugot po ang abisado oh so Warning, I'm sorry. Uh, basically, also, you know, section six. This is to assist again, assist the accused uh, with a counsel during trial proceedings because they will start the trial proceedings during arraignment. This is just to reinforce his right to counsel. So it is the duty of the court before arraignment to inform the accused of his right to counsel. Ask him if he desires to have one, and the court must assign a counsel the official to defend him unless the accused is allowed to defend himself in person or has employed a counsel of his choice. So, by appointment of counsel the official, the court, considering the gravity of the offense and difficulty of the question that may arise, shall appoint a counsel the official only such members of the bar in good standing who, by reason of their experience and ability, can completely defend the accused. In this regard, this is the last sentence. So, basically, when there is no lawyer available from uh, for the accused, let's say, kaya kaya tungo dun sa siya, indigent siya, the court may appoint any lawyer available at that time. So, back in Davao City, when I was in private practice. For example, ay mga akusado lagi pang arin o na wala sila yung mga councils na tungkol na sa kapubrihon. Ang judge, ang ginabuhat niya is gina-appoint niya ang mga available na mga lawyers at that time to stand in as their lawyer during arraignment. Pero ginabuhat na gudamu, ana o yun sa una, ay isang ingon o guilty o yun. Panay mo, matabang pala yun mong kaso. So ang mong gina-advise is you should plead not guilty magkita mo ang uh, rehearsal sa una. Time for counsel the official to prepare for arraignment. So, before the accused arraign, and if you were um, counsel of the official assist, to, be, to assist the accused, you are given time to um, confer with the accused eh, para nakaprepare mo kung saan ikli sa accused. Ayun na mong focus anin because Bill of Particulars has already been forsaken by the court. Okay? This will only delay the proceedings as well as this one. Okay. Suspension of arraignment. So before arraignment, there is an option to suspend arraignment if it appears that the accused is suffering from unsound mental condition, meaning the buang buang siya. There is a prejudicial question and there is a petition for review sa resolution sa prosecutor. The end. Any questions so far? Okay, Pangotana. Sir, ako sir. Okay, see. Katong lang, ang sang ang kategory ang katong non-capital offense, sir? Ha? Ang sang ang kategory ang mga non-capital offense? Anong less grave and light offenses? Thank you, sir. Okay. Anything else? Tapos pa mo tana. Nang regarding do sa to ang sir kanang grupo grupo sir. Ah okay, so actually your groups will be divided. No, will be 
di ba six mo so ang may mo ana is i-group mo na may opposing teams so ang may mo ana is ah uh, let's say group one and group two will will serve as the prosecution and defense group three and group four prosecution and defense group five and group six the prosecution and defense so may tabo is mag-assign kung cases sa inyo ha so kaniyang cases ang buhaton ninyo is Uh, mag iri through a video iri in up ninyo ang unsang nahitabo sa crime so for example nag-assign ko uh, rape sa inyo ha so dapat na yung rapist sa inyo ha na ay biktima niya i-perform ninyo na through the video tapos i-apply ninyo itong unsang pag-file of case before the the prosecutor o kanong itagod kung sa process sa filing of of information of, of complaint ana so you have to document through your video ang um, process sa criminal procedure tapos by the time na i think mga nasa around 2021 2023 to december diyan na mo mag stand in for as lawyers and defense counsels mag moot court ta diya na na kadang i-present ninyo inyo hang accused mag arraignment ta mag pre-trial og sample um mag sample ta og kadang present og witness tapos cross examine ana so that means um you're going to have two projects the first one is the the you have to do the video meaning you have to record how the complaint was initiated so if kung how the complaint is initiated dapat ipakita niyo kung sa tong crime na nahitabo so you will act between yourselves kamo ang mga actors as much as much as possible gusto na ko grandiose bala na pinobre style basta kanang nai effort ba nakuha ninyo maghatag man ko unsa actually nagye the draft na ko ang final instruction So kana ang mahitabo sa inyo ang groupings. So choose among yourselves who will be the actors and who will be the lawyers and the uh, defense counsels who will be the accused also in this case. Basta during moot court I will serve as the judge. Tapos you may also opt to choose among yourselves the court interpreter and like good. Basta maghatag og script ana to guide you on how to do the arraignment, the pre-trial, and the presentation of witnesses with cross-examination. Claro? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Sige. So, ano pa yung pangutan na? Sir, pangutan na ko, sir. Ah. Pangutan na ko, sir. So, di ba... Sure, ako uh, nang kanang capital offenser 15 to o oh, 10 to 15 years. Ah. Kanang naay unsa? Um penalty of reclusion perpetua death or uh life sentence kana capital offenses ta sila. Ah, uh, sir, nako ikwan pangutan ako ma sir. Kaning butang na to kanang isa ka tao ba nga ang iyang punishment kay capital offense niya mag-serve siya ng mga 15 tapos kanang mas mahurot o makuan na gyud na nga 15 years gyud sir o di ba na iubad ka nang taga sila ng provision para ulin ana ba para ah, magkuan okay. ana magbait eh, dito sila sa sulod sa okay. silda unsa na sa ang um, parol ang tawag ana so ang usa man gud kung let's say di Uh, ihatulan mo murder and let's say hindi man ko na exactly mo ingon ang judge na o oh, you are sent here by sentence 15 years hindi sa inga na ina-apply na to ang ISL or indeterminate sentence no mo ingon ang judge you are here by sentence with a minimum penalty of let's say 8 years and 1 day to 15 years and 1 day blah 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 so ang purpose mo ang parole is pag na-serve na ni mo ang minimum 
let's say katong 8 years, pero na ka mag-apply o parole, pasabot, tarawan imong records kung okay ba ka, buutan ba ka during the time na naapa sa 8 years sa pasuhan. So if tanaw nila mo, mo qualify ka for parole, then pagawason ka earlier, that is already if finish yun mo ang 15 years. Nakuha? Ah, uh, okay, sir. Tapos, oh. naalagay ang uban, sir, kanang, na ay uban lagi, sir, nga, ibutang na to, ang ina, ilang punishment kay 10 years. Oh. Pero nga nung sobrang na sila, sir, ang uban, na, na ako yung nadungog ba, na ako yung nabasa ng article, na, ang uban daw yung ina na, sir, pag masubra daw sa iyang kuan, sir, katong na sobrang uh, tuig, bayaran daw sa gobyerno to, sir? Tinood ba, sir? I am not aware of that. <laughs> I am not aware of that. Bayaran daw siya for, for his overstaying in the in the detention facility. But what I do know is if you are, if you have served already the minimum sentence, then you may apply for parole if you will qualify. Okay, sir. Salamat, sir. Okay. Questions? Wala na? Okay, sige. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Ah? Thank you, sir. Ah, sige, sige. Right.